Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Leaving the Farm right here on Revolution Radio Freedom Slips.com, where information never sleeps. We are a listener supported radio station where if you'd like to donate, please click on our go to our site first, www.freedomslips.com, and click on our listener support pages. Every little bit helps. Tonight we are simulcasting live on these changing times radio.ning.com in the UK as well as no borders radio uh, in Scotland you can find that at Scottish sovereigns on the land.ning.com as well as no border oh I just lost my page hold on not good sorry about that folks um hmm NoBordersRadio.co.uk. Uh, tonight we've got so many things to share. Um, let's just get right into it. Uh, everything is falling about their ears. Um, we'll call tonight comeuppance <clears throat> for uh, accountability. And this is what I've been praying for. This is what this is all about now up until now we've been seeing fall guys law enforcement cops social workers uh, clerks all of these different agents and actors who are not the directors being charged with crimes to discharge congressional bankruptcy from the timesherald.com former Worcester supervisor arrested and charged with child pornography offenses Skipak an ex Worcester township supervisor and a former longtime operator of a Montgomery County summer day camp for young boys has been arrested and charged with more than 60 criminal counts related to child pornography after detectives said they found on his computer and hard drives hundreds of videos of children engaged in sex acts. John Harris, 67, of the 1100 block of Cribal Mill Road, was arraigned on February 21st before District Judge Albert Augustine of Skipack on 50 counts of child pornography, 8 counts of dissemination of child pornography, and 8 counts of criminal use of communications facility, all third-degree felonies. According to an affidavit of probable cause filed in district court in Montgomery County, detective assigned to the Major Crime Unit and the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force identified on December 8th a computer that was sharing child pornography and after a connection was established with the computer, the detective initiated a download and received a file containing eight videos of children under 18 engaged in sexual acts. Subsequent investigation determined that the computer's IP address was owned by Verizon Online, and after delivering a subpoena to Verizon, the company provided a report on January 10th that identified Harris as a subscriber associated with that IP address, the detective said. On January 15th, a search warrant for Harris resident was issued by Augustine, and that evening, county detectives, along with members of the Pennsylvania State Police, Skipak Barracks, and an Abington Police Department detective, executed the warrant and seized a desktop computer, external hard drives, and thumb drives from the home, according to the affidavit. Additionally, authorities said Harris was interviewed at the scene and provided a written statement in which he admitted to installing software on his computer to search for pornography. According to the affidavit, a forensic examination of the seized items revealed 12 child pornography videos on the computer, 212 child pornography videos on one external hard drive, and 625 child pornography videos on a second hard drive. Several of the videos were duplicates, the affidavit states. Based on these findings, a warrant for Harris's arrest was issued on February 20th. At the preliminary arraignment on 20, February 21st, Augustine set bail for Harris at $25,000 unsecured, and Harris remains free, free amongst you in the community, whereby he can prey on more children. He's very, very adept at this. He's a, he's a promoter of advertisements for youth prisons. 
He's a smooth tongue, smooth talking fellow that has sold to you the human populace year after year, moment after moment, day after day, that you need to get your children into these youth groups, youth camps, juvenile justice to protect them from yourselves. There will be no more, and this is the norm at this time. From St. Louis .com, group home supervisor charged with abuse. Edwardsville, Illinois, a group supervisor at a Metro East home for people with developmental disabilities is accused of slapping two residents and pouring water on one of them. Waterboarding kids in Illinois. Prosecutors in Madison County have charged 21-year-old Marcus Levitt of Alton with two counts each of abuse of a long-term health care facility resident and aggravated battery of an intellectually disabled person. Investigators say the alleged abuse took place Tuesday at Beverly Farms in Godfrey and was reported to supervisors by a Levitt co-worker. The alleged victims are 36 and 61. Investigators say they were not seriously injured or brought into law. Now we're going to deal with the institution next because these holding facilities are unlawful on their faces. This will no longer be occurring. Former judge arrested on sexual exploitation charge from denver.cbslocal.com Arapahoe County, Colorado, a former judge and magistrate is out of jail after being arrested for allegedly attempting to engage in sexual intercourse with a 14-year-old boy. This, this psychopath is on the street. Arapahoe County investigators arrested Jeffrey Lang, 58, Friday night at his home in Arapahoe County. Lang previously served as a municipal judge in Castle Rock and Parker as an Arapahoe County Magistrate. These are the E-4s of Sparta. These are the ones that take children and abuse, rape, molest them in their official capacities, being held accountable for these things, doing their jobs, maintaining their function for the United States Incorporated as per their judicial oaths under 28 U.S.C. subsection 453 this will no longer be occurring, but a warning to everybody out there. He is on the street. He is loose and amongst you. From WHNT.com, update, former Rogersville magistrate charged with theft of court funds. Rogersville, Alabama, former town employee, was arrested Friday night after a lengthy investigation into missing funds from the town's court system. There were no red flags until the actual first audit, our yearly audit, part of our standard operating procedure, explained Rogersville Town Attorney Jim Stanfill. Stanfill said a certified public accounting firm, or CPA, which is part of this corporation, spotted some anomalies in the records from the court's clerk's office that led to further investigation. According to Stanfill, a forensic audit was conducted focusing on years 2010 through 2013, adding, quote, those results were turned over to the ABI and district attorney, end quote. On Friday, Angelica Robertson, 46, the former town magistrate and court clerk, talk about insider trading, was arrested on a grand jury indictment of theft of property. Investigators in the case said Robinson, Robertson is accused of taking more than 67000 from the Rogersville court system. As a magistrate, she was also paid to human traffic. She was also paid to maintain municipal hedge funds. As a court clerk, she was paid to exchange human beings as per monetary values and turn them into negotiable instruments as the bank teller. The court you find in Black's Law Dictionary is a bank. These are not the right charges that should be on this bank, banker, and bank teller. We'll deal with that at another point in time. From West.com, Palm Bay teacher 
lawyer arrested on child abuse charges, police say. A Palm Bay High School teacher in Florida and his attorney friend are accused of taking part in a child abuse case that involved forcing a young girl to undress in front of adult men while they forced her to consume alcohol. According to police, Jason John Birchfield, 45, would visit the attorney's house in Satellite Beach where a girl who was under the age of 14 was forced to undress in front of men and drink alcohol, including vodka, on at least three separate occasions. When questioned, police said Birchfield confirmed the victim's allegations and said he was there. Birchfield was charged with three felony counts of child abuse and three felony counts of failure to report child abuse. He bonded out of jail overnight. Folks, this man is loose in your community. Birchfield's friend, Satellite Beach attorney Joseph Palan Palante III, Joseph Palante III, was arrested last month and told police about Birchfield, detectives announced Friday. Kea Palante was also arrested this week, last week. According to Broward County Public Schools spokeswoman Michelle Irwin, Birchfield has been placed on paid, paid administrative leave pending a complete investigation into the allegations. Investigators said the crimes did not happen at Palm Bay High School, but Birchfield is not allowed on school property. Birchfield taught physical education and coached baseball before his arrest. For any parent out there who had your child on this baseball team, you might want to talk to your children and find out if they are victims of this group. This is a child sex trafficking ring. The head of the sex trafficking ring is this attorney, according to both individuals, Joseph Palente III, there in Florida. And you need to watch yourselves, each other, and your children to ensure there is no predation or further predation by this attorney and his cohorts, teachers at school, principal agents that bring him children. Bring him children. What does the school do? It tells on you parents for child abuse to bring these attorneys children to bring your children in front of these pedophiles into the court system into the child protection sex trafficking ring that was exposed by Senator Nancy Schaefer who was subsequently murdered in 2010 after her report to Congress same thing happened to Charles Lindbergh's son after he reported to Congress that uh, the law firm of J.P. Morgan was corrupt. After he reported to Congress the corruption of Congress, his son was subsequently kidnapped and murdered later to shut him up. They did the same thing with Nancy, Bill Bowen, Jeff Cifalo, numerous others of my brothers and sisters working to get this information out to you so that you can protect yourselves from the enemy of humankind. From TulsaWorld.com, Oklahoma City attorney arrested, accused of lewd acts. <clears throat> Oklahoma City, an attorney is accused of smuggling a sex toy into Oklahoma County Jail and duping an inmate into performing sex acts with it, supposedly in exchange for his legal fees. Repeat that. An attorney is accused of smuggling a sex toy into an Oklahoma County Jail and duping an inmate who into performing sex acts with it supposedly, supposedly in exchange for his legal fees. Here's a victim. They've been charged with a crime. They don't know how to get out of it. What's the first thing you do is you hire these predator attorneys to prey on you. 
Sheriff John Watzel said this went on for three months before the wom woman realized he wasn't actually her attorney. The woman agreed to participate in a sting, and Frank Kirk, 70, of Oklahoma City, was arrested Monday in a visitation room at the jail with the woman present. The sheriff's office withheld her name. Kirk was contacted to become the woman's attorney in January, but never became her attorney of record. Wetzel said from her initial court appearance on drug charges, she was represented by the Oklahoma County Public Defender's Office, and it's not clear why she thought he was her lawyer. Well, they were feeding her that information. They tag team. That's what attorneys do. A tag team. Part of that tag team is charging her with a commercial crime as per 27 CFR 72.11, which is a crime against the revenue laws. Who maintains the revenue streams? Nothing but attorneys. Nothing but attorneys. This will no longer be occurring either. I will not tolerate these things. From St. Louis.CVSLocal.com, St. Louis attorney arrested at NYC Airport, New York City Airport. A local attorney got a surprise while stepping off a plane from Istanbul, Turkey to New York City. FBI agents took 39-year-old Jeffrey Witt of St. Charles into custody Friday on felony counts of bank fraud and aggravated identity theft. A federal grand jury indicted it. indictment accuses Witt of taking a loan application to get a $100,000 line of credit using an unsuspecting St. Louis home to secure the loan. A bank fraud conviction carries a maximum penalty of 30 years in prison and fines up to $1 million. An aggravated identity, identity theft conviction means a mandatory two-year prison sentence. Now these things are presented to you so that you can see who your predator is. Who is your enemy? Is it you? Is it each other? Is it your brother? Is it your sister? Or is these, are these attorneys preying on you? Are these doctors preying on you? Are these group home supervisors preying on you? Are the psychiatrists preying on you? Is it the administration preying on you? Is it the directors preying on you? What kind of country is this? What kind of country do you live in? Do you live in a country or is it a style? or chain of events, which means congressional action. Use your own discretion, Jesus said. From businessweek.com, former Dewey executives charged with fraud, business of law. Three former top executives at Dewey and LaBeouf LLP, once a number three legal advisor to banks handling merger deals, were charged with the cook the books fraud scheme that led to the largest law firm bankruptcy in history. This is when your banks go bankrupt, folks. The banks that you see, that you walk into and out of every day, these are law firms. Go back and read the 1917 congressional record. Charles Lindbergh maintained that J.P. Morgan was a law firm. It is not a bank. This is banking when they take you into jail when they institutionalize you, when they take you to family and probate court, child protection, all of this, all of these things are banking. They are banking human beings. 1974 Inspector General's Act, no, 1978 Inspector General's Act, sorry, uh, explains more in detail how you find yourself, yourself, insured by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. So that one needs to be dealt with. They've got a lot of uh, bankruptcy to uh, discharge based on their productivity or entering into the Devonshire Participation Program. As they've all been doing, as per cognitive judgment, gotta get that attorney folks run out there. I'm telling you, this is awesome. Uh, 
from allafrica.com, Mozambique District Administrator Faces Corruption Charges. Mozambique's central office for the fight against corruption, oh, Inspector Generals, has charged the administrator and the permanent secretary of one of the districts of the northern province of Nampula of embezzling 1.1 million metike, about 36,000 U.S. dollars. And who controls that inflation rate, folks? It's nothing but the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. Addressing a Maputo press briefing, the GCCC spokesperson Bernardo Duce did not reveal the names of the suspects or the district concerned. He said the two claimed that the money had covered expenditure concerning travel on duty inside and outside of the district. During the investigation, the administrator and the permanent secretary could not present any documents justifying their claims. Wow, isn't that... Uh, surprising that uh, they would be so corrupt. It's called business, folks. The United States Incorporated. From the statejournal.com, second West Virginia highway administrator charged with lying to the FBI. Now here's a show for you, folks, brought to you by the greatest show on earth. Another administrator with the State Division of Highways has been charged with making a false statement to a federal agent. U.S. Attorney William J. Hmm. Island failed that second, said Edward Matthew Tuttle, 38, a Buchanan, was indicted by a federal grand jury in Clarksburg this week on one count of making a false statement to a federal agent. Tuttle is charged with making materially false statements to an FBI agent last month when he was questioned as part of an ongoing federal investigation in the Equipment Division of the West Virginia Divisions of Highways. Tuttle currently serves as the WVDOH or v v v D o Administrator in Upshur County and formerly was a supervisor with the Equipment Division. Come on, taking your stuff, folks. This is the name of the game. This is a nice little show. We're combating corruption, the U.S. Incorporated says. I don't think so. You are nothing but a criminal enterprise as defined as confederacy in Black's Law Dictionary. First edition from KIITV.com. Former Border Patrol agent Adam Garibay charged with murder. Corpus Christi bond has been set at $3.1 million for a former U.S. Border Patrol agent indicted in a fatal shooting incident that began in Corpus Christi back in January. Investigators say that Adam Garibay beat his estranged wife and forced her to identify the man he believed she was having an affair with back on January 2nd. He then drove 160 miles in Hondo, Tex to Hondo, Texas, where he allegedly shot and killed Keith Martin. Garibay was captured following a chase. He remains in the Medina County Jail on murder, assault, and evading arrest charges. Now, this is sick, folks. These are the entities, the psychopaths that you have been patronizing. That's not ever a good idea. They kill people. They murder people out of narcissistic rages, ownership of other human beings or other beings, viewing them as objects. Interesting enough, they are now being held accountable for their works and actions, which is nice to see. <clears throat> From the Cron.com, C H R O N.com, federal agent charged in insurance fraud scheme, San Antonio. Federal agent based in San Antonio has been arrested following his indictment on charges of wire fraud and lying to authorities. Federal prosecutors say 37 year old Rene Ronaldo Gonzalez made an initial court appearance in San Antonio on Thursday. He's a deputy U.S. Marshal facing a 13-count indictment. Now, if everybody remembers, we have been in contact with the Marshals. They didn't want to take the deal. They didn't want to protect human beings. <clears throat> Sorry about that, folks. Better luck next time. And these advertisements are, of course, irritating in between when I'm trying to read. <laughs> From the LC Sun 
news.com Detective testifies during its second day of trial of FBI agent charged with murder. Now, we, of course, contacted the FBI. We let them know that Congress was corrupt. And they returned with absolutely nothing. It's time for your time in the hell or the lower chambers of the exchequer. Thank you for participating in the Tree of Knowledge. Fredericksburg's Virginia, Teresa Smith had an enjoyable lunch with her close friend Julia Cerna Gonzalez April 19th and was looking forward to doing it again the following week, but shortly after leaving Smith's home on Alderwood Drive in North Stafford, Gonzalez was dead. The victim of four shots to the chest from her estranged husband's Glock 40 caliber gun. Arthur Gonzalez, 43, an FBI special agent, is charged with second-degree murder and using a firearm in the commission of a felony in connection with the death of his 42-year-old wife. The couple lived with their sons in Las Cruces until recently. The 911 call Arthur Gonzalez made the day of the shooting was routed to Donna, Donna Anna County because the provider for their internet phone services still had a local address. Commonwealth's attorney Eric Olson has claimed that Gonzalez staged the crime scene after killing his wife and feigned anguish as part of the act. Defense attorney Mark Gardner says the slaying was a tragic but simple case of self-defense. Yeah, he's trying this back to back with the actual, um, you know, true victim of self-defense there in Australia. That poor guy is being run through the ringer for having accidentally shot his wife. And this FBI agent thought, well, crap, I'll just make up the same thing. Hopefully, I'll get out of it. Thursday's second day of the tri trial featured the introduction of dozens of pieces of prosecution evidence, including cell phone records and testimony from Detective Todd Nosel, who interviewed Gonzalez for more than six hours after the slaying. Nosel said that the 18-year-old, 18-year FBI veteran told him he went to his home at 59 Alderwood Drive the afternoon of April 19th after having lunch with a friend, 23-year-old Kara Cast. The evidence so far has shown that Cast and Gonzalez were having an intimate relationship. Gonzalez and his wife were separated and in the process of getting a divorce according to the evidence and Gonzalez was surprised to find her at home that day. He also testified that Gonzalez told him that she was there to pick up some summer clothes. He followed her to the car and told her he wanted to talk about her, talk to her about speeding up the divorce proceedings. Julie Gonzalez was calm when the discussions began in the kitchen, according to her husband's story, but became upset when he told her he wasn't interested in reconciling and didn't love her anymore. Arthur Gonzalez told Nozal that his wife suddenly picked up a knife and came at him. He described blocking her attack with his left arm and pushing her back with his right when she immediately came back at him. He shot her two or three times. Gonzalez called 911 and said he performed CPR until rescuers, rescue workers arrived, but Julie Gonzalez was never revived. Gonzalez called 911. Um, oops, sorry. Nozo said Gonzalez cried and made the sign of the cross when he was told during the interview that his wife was dead. Smith, who lives near Gonzalez's home, said Julie Gonzalez was a little distressed that day about not being able to see her youngest son on his birthday. But Miss said Julie, but Smith said Julie Gonzalez seemed fine when he left and said she was going to her nearby former home to see the dog and get some clothes. Smith said Gonzalez thought her husband was seeing someone but didn't know and really didn't care. Much of the Commonwealth's attorney Eric Olson's opening statement and much of Thursday's evidence focused on Cass, who Olson claims Arthur Gonzalez was obsessed with. Prior to encountering his wife, Olson said Gonzalez had recently learned that Cass was seeing another and he was distraught about it. Man, his whole life is like falling apart. He's trying to have an affair. He's trying to quietly get away with all of these things because he views human beings as objects. Chasing tail is evidence of objectification and here he had a little conundrum he had to get rid of his wife sick these are the folks that you patronize the FBI sick sick sick
Here's one from CNN, which is a lot of entertainment, a lot of promoting attorneys, advertising for attorneys. We'll just get to the meat and potatoes here, CNN.com. Death row lawyer, if I throw in the towel, a client dies. By the time Edward Lee Elmore won his freedom at age 53, he had spent 30 years in prison. Most of them on death row in prison in South Carolina for a crime he says he did not commit. Quote, law enforcement planted evidence and prosecutors manipulated facts to cast Elmore as the only suspect in the 1982 murder of 75-year-old Dorothy Edwards, end quote. Even with seemingly overwhelming evidence in Elmore's favor, it took nearly two decades to win his release in what an appeals court called one of the most, those exceptional cases of extreme malfunction in the state criminal justice systems. It's not a malfunction. They were caught doing what they do. Now, this is evidence in Rocco's case. There is no warrant, never has been, but there's lots and lots and lots of ringers in the system. There's lots of ringer expert witnesses. There's lots of little experts all over the place, lots of detectives, lots of FBI agents, lots of CIA productions going on, wherein lots of people can be put into the shoot. That is no longer going to occur either. Now, this guy wasn't gotten out by his attorney. This guy got out because the evidence didn't show that he murdered anybody. He just spent 30 years, 30 years, the majority of his life in prison, put there by attorneys and bankers in black dresses intent on generating revenue as per 27 CFR Code of Federal Regulations 72.11 this is what they do this is how the bank makes its money this is what makes the world go round this is a business the United States Incorporated sick absolutely deplorable, abhorrent to God, absolutely abhorrent to God. For all the folks in uh, Philadelphia, oops, hold on one second, I've got an advertisement playing. Can't go anywhere online without finding these things, right? Sick. My heading's being altered. Charges will come at a later date. From myfoxphilly.com, elderly woman to remain jailed for feeding birds. Let that sink in. A woman who was arrested last month for feeding wild animals will stay in jail for now after her latest arrest. A judge decided this morning to hold Mary Musselman, 81, 81, behind bars after she allegedly violated the terms of her probation. Musselman originally went to jail back in January after wildlife officers said she violated probation by feeding bears in the and near her backyard, they said she had been warned not to feed wild animals. Last November, after wildlife officers had to euthanize a bear she had been feeding. The bear wasn't attacking anybody. Nothing was going on. They just blew smoke. Now, this is your grandmother in jail for feeding... Caesar's animals. I'll continue reading. A judge gave her probation at the time and made it clear, quote, do it again and go to jail, end quote. She did, was arrested in January, 81 years old, and the case ignited controversy when Musselman was held without bond. 
her attorney. Here comes the monster, everybody. William Fletcher, he's got a piece of this action, told Fox 13 that officers issued a new arrest warrant after checking on her home and seeing that she was leaving bread out for crows. Her attorney, William Fletcher, told Fox 13 that officers issued a new arrest warrant after checking on her home and seeing that she was leaving bread out for crows. Now this is the attorney pretending to be her friend and she's informing on herself letting him know you know she's feeding birds and whatever else and her attorney you know he doesn't advise her against that he doesn't tell her that this is banking he doesn't tell her that he's into human trafficking he doesn't tell her that she's paying him to be her pimp he doesn't tell her any of those things I'll continue reading that violates her court order not to feed any animals Musselman appeared in court this morning, Fletcher said. A medical evaluation concluded that Musselman suffers from Alzheimer's and dementia, and he requested that the judge place her in alternate housing, such as her brother's home in Illinois. This attorney's trying to get her drugged, trying to get her into the medical industry, because this attorney is one of the fund managers on these QSIP accounts. Where 81, gra 81 year old grandmothers can produce nicely for attorneys and other bankers in black dresses. There's other reports stemming from around the internet, and it's not in this one on myfoxphilly.com, that her husband's at home. He's ill, and he needs her with him. If you do not stand up now for your sister, 81 years old who's being transferred about by attorneys and bankers in black dresses her husband's going to die the estate will go to attorneys she will die the estate will go to attorneys her children will come in and fight over it and the estate will go to attorneys now this is you this is not some 81 year old in a district in a distant uh, planet being preyed on by some alien attorneys or bankers in black dresses this is your grandmother being preyed on by the bank this is how they do it if you don't stop it who will keep patronizing this thing perpetrating genocide right before your eyes right before your very eyes um, so it's, it's just it's, it's important to me that you know this is still occurring day after day after day after day and she wouldn't be in jail if the community had already stood up if there was anybody there watching out for her this would not be occurring now again I'm gonna read you out the eight stages of genocide classification ah uh, she's just an 81 year old symbolization ah uh, she just a uh, uh, diagnosis an Alzheimer's patient dehumanization she's just poor she's from a low-income house organization your county polarization let's see how far we can pit each other pit her family members against her make sure they believe that she's insane so we can do this to her preparation of course is these attorneys cooking the books back channel extermination and denial I'd like to read the denial and this is to the State Department and for all those who say I'm affiliated with Genocide Watch no this report was prepared for the State Department years ago by Gregory S. Stanton. So I read from the report. It's from their own mouths. Now that we've cleared that up. Number eight, denial is the eighth stage that always follows a genocide. Let me repeat that. Denial is the eighth stage that always follows 
a genocide. It is among the surest indicators of further genocidal massacres. The perpetrators of genocide dig up mass graves, burn the bodies, try to cover up the evidence, and intimidate the witnesses. They deny that they committed any crimes and often blame what happened on the victims. They block investigations of the crimes, etc. From CNN.com University is digging into Mississippi's past with a long forgotten graveyard amid a grove of trees buried beneath the grass and dirt Mississippi's past is colliding with its future surveyors last month discovered dozens of neat tight rows of coffins just feet below the ground at the University of Mississippi Medical Center in Jackson this is not Rwanda this is not Iraq this is not Afghanistan. This is not some far off place where genocide is occurring that you don't really have to deal with or, or consider because it's happening to off color or off culture or off religious entities. And I'll continue reading. Sure, there were stories that there was a cemetery somewhere on the grounds of the medical center that today sits where the Mississippi State Lunatic Asylum once stood. Where the Mississippi State Lunatic Asylum once stood. And remember, the elderly woman that was diagnosed with Alzheimer's and is in an institutionalized state as we speak because she was feeding birds. I'll continue reading. But the location of the cemetery was lost to history. That's until an estimated 2,000, 2,000 unmarked graves were discovered during a survey for a planned campus expansion. The find was for, has forced the medical center to halt its expansion and begin the daunting task of figuring out what to do with the 2,000 bodies lying in the path of their next big thing. It's just an irritant. Nothing to see here, folks. Gotta get done with expanding the medical center. Who cares about the 2,000? Gotta get this done. Policy, you know. It's a scene that has played out in recent years in New York, California, Texas, Illinois, and Wisconsin as developers look to build on what, believe, what is believed to be vacant land only to find forgotten graveyards. These are dumping grounds. Let's not sugarcoat it. This is otherwise in any other venue called a dumping ground. Dumping ground for human remains. This is Nazi Germany. This is Cambodia. This is Vietnam. This is Korea. This is Japan. This is America. This is Florida. This is Illinois. This is Wisconsin. This is Mississippi. Quote, as development continues, likely more to be found, end quote. Aaron Kimmerly, a forensic anthropology professor at the University of Florida, said, but the sheer size of the Mississippi find, one of the largest in recent years, has many asking one question, who were these people? For as long as anyone can remember, construction workers and contractors have been finding the simple pine boxes on the property of the medical center, which opened in 1955. These bodies are your brothers and sisters, these are your aunts and uncles that have gone missing between 1955 and 2014. There were 
were four, five, and sometimes six boxes with only skeletal remains found here and there on the grounds. Once in the 1990s, workers building a laundry facility found about 40 unmarked graves, said Jack Mazurek, a spokesman for the medical center. But last year, the number jumped with the discovery of 66 coffins during a road improvement pot project at the campus. Over the years, there were rumors, depending on who you ask, that coffins contained the bodies of the Civil War dead or slaves. Absolutely not. All of these things are perpetrated during your lifetime. They're just found later, according to the rules of genocide. Of course, they're not going to bury them in front of you. They're not going to kill these people in front of you. On any given moment in time, there's over a million missing people everywhere. Children, adults, females, males, grandmothers, mothers and fathers. Human trafficking, genocide. These things are absolutely abhorrent and no longer to be tolerated. No longer will I tolerate them. From Indolink.com, Indian American doctor charged with health care fraud. Washington, an Indian American physician has been indicted for health care fraud in Syracuse, New York, and faces up to 30 years in prison with a million dollar fine if convicted. Mahesh Kothruth, 43, who owned and operated upstate pain management, a medical practice in Utica and Fulton area, was indicted with his employee, Bonnie Meisland, 42, by a federal grand jury last week, according to the North County Gazette. The indictment charges Cthulhu and Meisland with engaging in a scheme to defraud Medicare, a government health care scheme for senior citizens, by submitting false claims for reimbursement for medical services that were not performed. They do this every day. Judges cash in on every each and every diagnosis the force of Sparta, our local community district magistrates, are running this thing. Uh, Federal uh, Magistrate and Judges Association, you can go read these things. This is the Devonshire Participation Program. Get people addicted so we can cash in on the fallout. From Freep.com, Detroit police officer charged with sexually assaulting women while responding to a call. The woman called 911 seeking help from police after reportedly being assaulted by her boyfriend. But while police responded to the domestic violence call, one of the officers allegedly took the woman into an upstairs bedroom and sexually assaulted her. <sighs> Detroit police officer Dion Nunley has been charged in the alleged October 30th assault of a 31-year-old woman. Police said DNA connected Nunley to the assault. Quote, I'm troubled, Detroit, Detroit Police Chief James Craig said at the news conference Friday. Certainly this is a type of criminal misconduct, misconduct, that should never happen by any member of this department or any department for that matter. Misconduct. No. No, 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 no. Harm. He did not miss conduct himself. He harmed a human being that had called on him to protect her from another psychopath. Enough is enough. Absolutely deplorable. Sick. Sick that that can be justified in the mind as misconduct. I'm becoming an officer. I'm becoming a human being. It's psychopathic. And the chief of police is just as psychopathic if he can consider this misconduct. It's the same thing as these attorneys espousing these things. How does humanity get to this point in time where they're accepting, accepting, tolerating, consenting to, asking for, such deplorable, deplorable behavior. Sick, filthy, disgusting, shame on you. 
and to all of humanity from CNN.com. Michigan woman's auto payments hid her debt for over five years. You beings out there that are not watching your neighbors. For years, the payments went out of the woman's bank account. Nobody batted an eyelid, bills were paid, and life went on as normal in the quiet neighborhood of Pontiac, Michigan. Neighbors didn't notice anything unusual. The woman traveled a lot, they said. She kept to herself. One of them mowed her grass to keep things looking tidy. At some point, her bank account ran dry. The bills stopped being paid. After its warnings went unanswered, the bank holding the mortgage foreclosed on the house, a common occurrence in a region hit hard by economic woes. Tell me who they served. She didn't get notice. You can't tell me that she got notice. She's been dead for five years. While the bank has been cashing in on it, while the local judge has been cashing in on this, and the local judge foreclosed on the home, and they knew she was dead. Her employment was interesting to read about. I'll continue reading. Still nobody noticed what had happened inside the house. Nobody wondered out loud what had become of the owner. Not until this week when a worker went by the bank to repair a hole in the roof made and made a grisly discovery. The woman's mummified body was sitting in the back seat of her car parked in the garage. The key was halfway in the ignition. So the local cops, the local FBI, they were going to take her car out after they killed her, but decided no, nobody would pay attention. And sure enough, five years later, nobody paid attention. Authorities say they believe the woman died at least five years ago. They're still trying to figure out what happened. I've been doing this stuff for 37 years. Never seen anything like this before, said Under Sheriff Mark McCabe of Oakland County, just outside of Detroit. Never in all my life. Oh, goodness. Can't be my friends and my cronies doing these things, right? They knew she didn't have any friends. They knew that she was separated. Because they're fed that information by the separator or the attorney, corporate counsel attorneys, to be more specific. The woman who the sheriff office believes is Pia Ferenkop paid her bills from her bank account through auto pay, according to McCabe. If she were still alive, Oakland County Sheriff Michael Bouchard said Frank Ferenkop would be 49 years old. Neighbors said they didn't know much about the woman describing her of, as of German descent. She really kept to herself. We never really heard anything from her. Neighbor Caitlin Talbot told CNN affiliate WYXYZ. Talbot said she wasn't aware of anyone le seeing the woman who traveled a lot in about six years. Quote, she was probably there for a couple days. Then she'd leave for a week. Then she'd come back. Then she'd leave for a month and come back, Talbot said. Cabe said neighbors chalked up the woman's absences to her returning to Germany for long periods of time. According to the sheriff, Frank Ferenkopf's employer last saw her in September of 2008. Despite years without a living owner, the house was never broken into, Talbot said, and McCabe said one of the neighbors cut the grass for years. Authorities told WXYZ that the house appears to have been to have black mold inside and the detective entered the building Thursday wearing hazardous material suits. Bouchard, the county sheriff, said Friday that there were very few outward signs of anything awry. Her mail didn't pile up since the post office was collecting it and nothing inside her home or car pointed to a cause of death. Now, the U.S. Post Office is, of course, fully integrated with the local authorities, so is FedEx, as we found out when we were trying to serve the House of Lords, some paperwork that kept turning up missing. And if we had not have facilitated an alternative method of service, they would have never got those documents and never would have known about FedEx and the USPS interfering in the delivery of mail matter. I'll continue reading. 
Police were dispatched to the house for a welfare check in 2007 after a neighbor reported not having seen the owner in a while. After seeing no signs of anything amiss, police went on their way. 2007. We'll be back, folks. Stick around. Hi, and welcome back to the second hour of Leaving the Farm right here on Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com where information never sleeps. We are a listener-supported radio station, so if you can donate, please visit us at www.freedomslips.com and click on our listener support pages. Join us in chat, shop at our store, uh, purchase the unedited archives, uh, whatever your fancy. Uh, we are also simulcasting live tonight on No Borders Radio in Scotland, as well as These Changing Times, T-I-M-E-Z, .com in the UK. Thank you, Patty and Ben, for giving us these venues, as well as Hawk. Behind the scenes, nobody sees what's going on, but these beings, these beloved beings, keep us on the air. They pay the bills when no donations come in, they support us in all of our efforts and on each station, No Borders, These Changing Times, and of course right here on Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. We are not corporate sponsored. We are not federally funded. We are not under the thumb of the Broadcasting Board of Governors. You can find their control at bbg.com. They do have international control of all civil media internationally and we are not controlled we are not censored we are not told what to bring you who to bring you who to have on our shows what to say what to do we are fully fully absolutely listener supported that means that you support what you want to hear if you want to hear more of revolution radio freedomslips.com these changing times these changing times Dot ning dot com. Please support the stations. Every little bit helps. And you are the reason we are here. We require your support. Otherwise, we are not. I do have a special guest tonight coming on. And um, should be here any time now uh, to talk about all of these things, of course, and give us their word, um, which is just most beautiful. Oh boy, I was going to read some information out and then I got lost, like the blonde that I am, apparently. I'll just use that as, as an excuse tonight. Are you there, Bo? What are you doing, buying into that concept of blonde? Well, it's an excuse. <laughs> Otherwise, I have to admit that I was just silly or stupid, right? You know, I hated the indoctrination <laughs> school system, but um, some things still stick with me, you know, and um, I'll never forget my junior high gym teacher. Excuses are for losers. Absolutely. Now. I'm a loser, baby. What was that? Um, I don't know. Three Doors Down or something? That was a really good song years ago, anyway. We were talking about, before the break, how that woman just, she sat there for five years, over five years. Um, she worked, of course, for corporate governance. She happened to be fired from her job in 2008, the same year that the supposed death occurred. Or, you know, th These are not natural things. This is a way to raise the state when nobody's looking, and nobody was looking. Her children are reporting in the media reports, the mainstream media reports, that they don't talk to her. Never really got along. And this is what happens when division occurs. That is the action of divide and conquer. And sure enough, here we have an American woman found dead after five, six years. The backseat of her car in her own garage. Never noticed gone on notice all of these years and it's so disheartening for me to see humanity itself behaving in such manners that they're not aware of what's going on and, and what goes on around them to that extent five years well there, 
there was two stories that I read, and, and one of them was, was rather long and detailed, and there seems to be conflicting information about, you know, when the uh, neighborhood noticed this woman's disappearance, and she had said that she was from Germany and was, you know, she hinted that she was perhaps going back there, I believe, uh, story more or less read and so they used to assume that uh, she left went back to Germany uh, of course nobody checked on her she must not have had any friends in the neighborhood but there's also conflicting information about uh, you know something that you know that happened uh, you know she was reportedly by the story you know dead for six years five six years I believe um, 2008 or 2009 she might have Died, as they're saying, um, but the you know there was a there was a uh, a tow truck there that 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 towed a car out of there like four years ago, which is after that time. Um, you know, I mean, and these na neighbors are going by memory, right? So maybe they you know obscured things in their mind. It's kind of the Gelnhausen effect, you know, when time goes by, it tends to be removed from the mind. Right, and this is relative, absolutely relative to Bolshevik Russia. Females were found years later. Uh, they were left. They were the ones in the bread lines. They were the ones that were forgotten um, because of specialty. This is what feminism induces into a culture. It teaches the culture that the female is specialized. It can do anything she wants, and so she burns all of her bridges. And we see this with her family members saying, well, I didn't know she was gone because we never talk. Well, that's six years of not talking. And a former employer, of course, having fired her the same year that she died is very concerning. Um, usually they allow these times to go by, like the uh, bodies found at the university and bodies found, boys' bodies found at a boys' school this last year in Florida. These things, these occurrences, first you have to remove all of their friends and families. And when you go through court, family court, probate court documents, the boys' bodies that were found in Florida, for example, or the, the children's bodies that were for, found in Canada, the father is always removed from the ability to protect. But what people are not seeing on the back end is that it's almost guaranteed that he dies of some form of, quote, suicide in order for these children to disappear. And mom, she dies usually of a drug overdose. Forty-three females a day die in the United States Incorporated of drug overdosing. And this is relative to such as Indonesia, when the tsunami hit and made a whole bunch of orphan children this type of war, fourth generation warfare, is perpetrated behind the scenes. So dad's removed, dad becomes a statistic of suicide or some other form of death, mom becomes a statistic, she usually dies at the hands of the medical industry, cancers and whatever else diagnosis, and these children are left orphaned. And I, I was um, speaking of a case this last week of a father who was um, said to have killed his wife this week and taken off with his daughter. Now, I talk a lot about my brother George Zinkan. He was a psychologist at the University of Georgia. And we were teaching compulsive behavior. We were teaching what compels you to do the things that you do. Advertisements, marketing techniques, all of these things within the social indoctrination dynamic. George Zinkan was said to have killed his wife and two others, then to have ran up into the Georgia mountains, buried himself, and then shot himself in the head, according to GBI, which is Georgia Bureau of Investigation. And this entity is the same one that said Kendrick Johnson, the child who was found rolled up in a gym mat in a Georgia school, died of natural causes. This is the same production company 
through the CIA, the Central Intelligence Agency, producing all of these presentations for you. And I can guarantee you that George Zinkon did not kill his wife. He did not kill anybody. And everybody needs to follow that case out to extension. So here you have some guy that was fingered by law enforcement, that was killed by law enforcement, and this whole presentation presented and still, and this is back in 2009, this is a year before they killed Nancy, our sister, uh, former senator of Georgia. Um, in 2012, they came out with another report that said her, his family was still fighting over the custody of the children because the will was not being adhered to, of course. Couldn't, because one of the people that had died happened to be one of the... Uh, executrix of the will happen chance right and in this in 2012 three years after his death the court admitted in the mainstream media that the 3.5 million dollar estate had been raised by the attorneys in the now facilitated custody dispute because both their mother and their father was murdered by the CIA. Now this is right here in your own backyard folks. I bear witness to these things. These are my brothers and sisters that were teaching me. These are my teachers years ago and Nancy had done a report to Congress about the corruption of child protection how they steal your children off of you and trick them out through the legal process Nancy was killed in April of 2010 one month before they attempted on me for outing the sheriff of Spokane County along with various others, Stevens County, Washington, perpetrating the most heinous crimes against children. Now, the sheeple saw the presentation in the local Spokane news about Mayor West being charged with child abuse out at the boys' ranch and about two different sheriffs being charged with child abuse, sexual abuse out at the boys' ranch. One sheriff shot himself in the head. Mayor West eventually died of cancer. But the other sheriff was transferred out to a, a youth camp for boys and girls, Salvation Army Youth Camp, Gifford Youth Camp, about 50 miles north of Spokane, out of sight, out of mind, so that the sheeple don't see the back end. These perpetrators are employed to do these things to your children. And if you catch them, they're transferred somewhere else. They're not actually penalized for anything because this is business. This is what your government does. It is a corporation known as the United States Incorporated. And this is day-to-day -day business. Now, this is according to their own directives. Um, I teach these things. You can find them on my YouTube channel, Tammy K32. Bo teaches these things on YouTube at Bo Knows Entertainment on YouTube. You can visit our Facebook pages. Rocco and I both have a Facebook. Or go to chooseyourside.org to find our documents court records, and evidence as to each word that we speak. You can also go to the 1974 Memorandum 200 of Dr. Henry Kissinger to the National Security Council Maintaining that depopulation should be the highest priority of all foreign policy, which means communication between two counties. Each county is a corporation defined as a foreign nation, foreign state, under 28 U.S.C. subsection 
zero three. He created a depopulation program program out of his memorandum called the Office of Population Affairs. And if you go to opa.gov, your government, you will see that this is the Department of Health and Human Services. The Department of Health and Human Services is also traded on Don and Brad Street as Rick Perry. Rick Perry is also traded as the General Counsel. The General Counsel, of course, being the directors of policy, depopulation, and all of these things are written for you to see. It is up to you to choose your side. Who are you going to patronize? Your house or theirs? Bottom line. You can also find this information at TammyPepperman.org T-A-M-I-P-E-P-P-E-R-M-A-N.org It's all written and it's all brought to you so that you can avoid these things and not be part of the depopulation program. Sorry, Bo, it's, it's just so, it, it, it's abhorrent and so sad to watch these things over and over again. And the history really does repeat itself. That Michigan woman is asked to every Russian or Bolshevik female that was in Bolshevik Russia during the time that they were being depopulated just before Nazi Germany occurred because of the indemnification. Well, <clears throat> they're not taught this kind of uh, thinking and the actual events that happened um, through, you know, the uh, historical, you know, even the records which recorded. Um, you know, I started going back through the records uh, regarding the treaties with Russia the other night over in Avalon. And uh, it's very interesting as to what uh, the communications were back then and how it's presented in your high school history textbooks. Intelligence productions. Yes. Yeah. Luckily, Avalon is still pretty good. I mean, I mean, they're not altering stuff. Now, I've seen a few... Things get harder to find there for some reason, um, for whatever reason. But uh, attorneys trying to protect their little butts. Yes, like yes, yeah. As we saw with the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act being taken um, off the uh, House of Representatives website over last summer, when <laughs> you know. We were, we were using that for something that they didn't really intend for us to use it as. They used that. They wanted the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act so they could sue each other, you know. Right. And so it could, you know, be Congress suing Congress, and they could do redistribution that, redistribution that way and make it look like something else. But, right. Uh, it's actually under environmentalism to redistribute East County. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and this, you know, the, the web of trickery is so thick and complete with these attorneys. You know, it's amazing that that I even uh, stumbled onto the information, or I'd probably still be going down that, you know, patriot route of destruction. I'm thankful that you're here. You know, this week, I love that report you did. Um, is the war over yet? And that was over on Bono's Entertainment, and it was just so profound. Um, talk about it a little bit, because the listeners are in agreement. It's like, holy cow, you know, you're, you're able to open so many eyes at this time with your ability, and it's just, it's been amazing. Well, yeah, it, um, there, you know, several reports how that it was, 
a a classic textbook CIA uh, coup d'état, and, and and people you know believe that more and more every day. But uh, a lot of people still need to make that connection that. You know, when they say there's a new Cold War and tensions are mounting between Russia and the United States, that it's all just a play. And these are actors because under the 1941 Atlantic Charter, and then 10 years of foreign policy, you can read all the stuff that uh, helped solidify this deal. There is a world government structure with... Uh, uh, United States Congress that we'll just call Congress now after that point took the reins and they have global dominion and that essentially means that all the citizens under Congress you know through these various uh, smoke and mirrors you franchises. know uh, other different countries you know what it appears like in the media franchises th they're just yeah, they're just separate franchises with more citizens that can be used to offset congressional bankruptcy. That's all it is. More, you know, people in the, uh, you know, what they call it, the uh, Devonshire Participation Program. Absolutely. And I was watching that video, and it was like you were showing the, um, uh, what was it called, the, the uh, newly improved CIA uh, bunker you know, for Kim Jong-un when he was lobbing missiles into the sea to create fear, to promote fear and induce people or human beings into patronizing their various states to protect them from such a scary thing from occurring. Can you explain some of that? I mean, it was, it was beautiful how you broke it down. Well, yeah, I mean, they... They throw these stories out there about, uh, ooh, big bad Kim Jong-un, he's launched a couple missiles and, you know, sunk him into the ocean, you know, like that's a big threat to anybody except for, you know, the wildlife out there, at, you know, United States and Russia's uh, military, uh, you know, do more than that in, in, in five minutes than uh, Korea does in... Uh, you know, a whole year, um, you know, oh, goodness, I could but, go but off on several tangents uncle. there. But yeah. He executed his uncle, and that makes him so bad. How many legislators have been murdered by legislators? Yeah. How many? Way, 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 way more than North Korea ever even thought of, because North Korea is a franchise of the United States Incorporated. And their treaty agreement is called the 1953 Mutual Defense Agreement mm -hmm. between right. the United States Incorporated and the Republic of Korea. Yeah, the Republic of Korea. <laughs> not North Korea, not South Korea, so even there. There you go. It's in your face. If you look at that treaty, which still stands today, you know, but and they see. called it North and South Korea back then, but the treaty is only with the... The Republic of Korea? Absolutely. Oh, come on, people, wake up. This is... Uh, and that stems from the 1802 Indemnification Convention that all the attorneys went through. The 1954 treaty with North Korea or the Republic of Korea actually stems through the Gambling Commission. That commission was established in the 1802 Indemnification Convention. What does that mean? What is a hedge fund? A municipal hedge fund fund is insurance on a bet. They're hedging a bet. That's the gambling commission. Each and every time you're institutionalized, you're institutionalized. They're betting on your productivity. They're betting against your you, you living to see your pension, the debt derivatives. They're saying you're living too long and you're costing the money. So they're trying to hedge these bets through these municipal hedges. And guess who facilitates your death? Guess who facilitates your productivity? If you have to go through a divorce, you could sure as bet there's an agent going to be there waiting in the wings to take your wife off of you, whisper in her ear, talk to her, sell her all these concepts. Well, I mean, that you know type of thing that's going on makes me... 
really question that, that lady that passed away of Michigan there. Now, um, you know, did she, I mean, it, it says it didn't look like there was any foul play involved, but now, however, now this is a strange thing. Her cadaver was found in the back seat of the car with the key partially in the ignition, but it wasn't in the ignition to the point where, you know, the ignition was on and would have, you know, left the car running to create the carbon monoxide in order for right. her to die that way. Suicide. Now, you know, know, knowing how these realtors work and hearing so many stories, you know, and by the way, there was that popular woman in Australia that right. uh, died under suspicious circumstances with a realtor uh, circling in the background there, as the story points out. I've been um, watching more of her, just her and her behavior and everything, and I've seen that she's absolutely beautiful. I really like um, her heart, the way that she's presenting, and I think that she was indeed killed. Well, it's, it's certainly something that uh, if we had, uh, you know, people investigating crimes under the public law that should be pursued, you know, however, when, you know, we're still under this... Uh, you know, private acts and acts of commerce type mentality by the, uh, you know, oligarchs slash Congress in charge. Why, um, you know, this is, you know, kind of thing that that uh, gets swept under the rug in lieu of, you know, good economics, which is good economics is, uh, you know, fiscal policy. The judges. Throwing citizens under the bus. Yeah. These judges, they direct. Uh, corporate counsel directs their um, maintaining corporate counsel describes itself as maintaining for corporations of course and you have corporate counsel in each municipality you also have your commission states in each municipality that are commissioned to go out and attack you uh, penalize you for things call you things the priest is a presentation just as much as a television programming is and that priest when 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 you're being attacked by the judge and the local cops and you're being vilified and everything else, they require you to, of course, fall back on your priest. So the priest grooms you to feel like you're the bad guy. And it's this constant play against the human being creating this subjugated product of the United States Incorporated. But once you rise above that, you're able to get out of it and see for what it is. And each one of these actors, they act in unison to control you as a populace and it, it's absolutely ingenious in design however it wasn't smart enough because they did get caught and they were promised they were going to get caught so with charlotte dawson though you know if there's foul play involved it involves uh higher levels because for weeks preceding her death it was you know put out there that she had uh, emotional problems or uh, depression right. and you know and then of course the suicide right. allegedly and she was found so, by a real estate agent a real estate agent now now you know what's suspicious about the lady in Michigan was that the uh, that a car was reported as being towed away uh, after the time she would have uh, passed away. It, would, it must have been the other another car out in the driveway that uh, you know was towed away because she was found in her car in the garage. Like I said, her cadaver in the back and the keys only partially in the ignition, which is just it's just it's strange. And but um, you know she was set up for automatic payment on everything, and she had like. Forty or fifty thousand dollars in her account to blow through. So right. now, if just hypothetically, if she was off by a real estate agent, uh, and the real estate agent didn't know that, uh, you know, they would have had to just uh, lay low for a while until the money ran out, which right. is indicative business. of what happened. Right, and business for the bank. Remember, the court is the bank. Right. So everybody's cashing in on this. And who knows that she's divided from her family, the local counselor, the local church, her priest or pastor. She's divulging all of this information to others, and so it was easy for her to disappear 
It's very easy. And and everybody who's who's considering this to be unbelievable, I did an interview with Michael uh, Toops. You can re uh, see that on Leaving the Farm in December. In October, I did an interview with Otis Davidson, and he was raised right there in the in the Flint, Michigan area, and he walks us through it. He was attacked by a garbage man that broke his arm at the behest of this court, at the behest of this judge, at the behest of this local municipality and developers. Remember, he was in um, heating and air conditioning, but he had to buy products from this service company that had blackballed him and everything else. All of these things, that's called a nation. That's a foreign nation, is that little county. All it's doing is facilitating government. This is what it does. It raises humanity. It, it waits until um, you can be preyed on to prey on you. You know, if your family's not divided, you cannot be preyed on. But if you're sending your schools out to the public school system, that teacher, that principal agent at the school, can falsely, falsely accuse you of abuse while they're abusing your children so that your children have the exhibited behaviors. And let me tell you something. Those that don't believe me, they are giving children rohypnol derivatives. Rohypnol, the date rape drug, is Ativan. They're in different concentrations. They're giving children uh, cocaine derivatives in the form of Ritalin. They're, they're giving children that, that create memory loss, fugue states, states of amnesia. And these children, they feel sexually abused, they just don't know who's sexually abusing them. They're exhibiting signs of sexual abuse. That one school, the Plano School District, that was abusing those children down in Texas, CPS came in, and the Department of Health and Human Services treated those children for STDs, and only their adopted mother had an STD, although they were falsely accusing the adopted father. Now, these things need to stop, and you need to realize and open your eyes, for Christ's sakes. Back in 2009, when they killed George, they said in the reports that he buried himself and shot himself in the head. Then they altered those reports throughout time and history. They're still redistributing his estate. But the sheep of mine accepted that story. That CIA production. These things can no longer occur. When they killed Nancy, they said her husband thought he had cancer, so he shot her in the head, then shot himself in the head. Three weeks later, they're saying, nope, we did the autopsy, he didn't have cancer. But the sheeple believed the first original story presented by the CIA. They never looked any deeper. And here we are, we're on the edge of the herd. By the end of, by the September of 2010. It was George in 2009, Nancy in April of 2010. They attempted on me in, in May. They killed Bill Bowen, who did a, um, a documentary called Innocence Destroyed. He's a former FBI worker with us. They killed him mid-August, and by the end of August, they had killed Jeff Cifalo. And if you look at the things that these uh, former congressmen, senators did that got them, you know, dead, essentially. Watch the line that Rand Paul is walking. He won't cross that line. No. He's not He's not a fool, but, uh, you know, he is very dangerous because he's got uh, all this uh, built-up, um, you know... Uh, followers. Followers from his father's years of, um, you know... Speaking out, playing the good guy people. or whatever. Speaking with forked tongue. As as if there is such a thing as a good Congress. Of course, you know Ron Paul never crossed the line either. You know he'd do what he, uh, basically what he did to you know garner the patriots out there, right. uh, garner the consensus reality. The new patriots that really don't like their government. He wants to offer them a new one. 
the same one, but it has a different face on it, and that's what these CIA productions. That's what, of course. That's why he pushed the Constitution the way he did. Look at Rand Paul. What what departments does he sit on? What councils? What commissions? He's right up there with the Department of Health and Human Services. Right. His um, background being in the medical industry, as his father's, and you know we're finding out that. You know, more and more, as well, I found out last year, unfortunately, to the demise of my mother, how the medical industrial complex is nothing but another arm of the redistribution killing machine. And when you've been fully redistributed, that's when you're <coughs> off. Her insurance ran out, uh, and, you know, so the... Doctors at hospice uh, deemed so her life should run out. And we saw that with the drugs that she was given. We saw that in her and before diagnoses. Her. It said uh, that she never had cancer. They were treating her for cancer. Right. And her insurance ran out well before that. Um, your dad had had a knee replacement on their shared insurance. She had had LASIK surgery. She had had um, dental surgeries. He had had dental surgeries. And they had expended all of their insurance, and so they had to kill your mother for the death derivatives in order to maintain him still on insurance. And they will do the same thing to him and everybody else's family members until this is stopped, until you stop them, and until everybody stands up all at one time. And, you know, again, um, I went through this. 38, 39, 40 times throughout a span of three years over and over and over again after I first started going up against the state, which is the Catholic Diocese, the federal government, and um, th th that wasn't, I mean, and, and in a short span of time, what was so um, heartbreaking for me to see is that it wasn't only Sonia, your mother, um, who was murdered at the same time, but Phil, his dad was murdered at the same time, within a month. Um, they were both institutionalized around the same time, and, and Phil's dad had actually gone in there um, because of the actions of his stepchild promised the estate and in in the documentation he he'll never get it but the attorneys fighting over it will redistribute it until it's gone anyway so so then nobody notices these things they just watch each other and they're like how dare you that's my stuff and then somebody else is wrestling it no that's mine that's mine it belongs to me no it's mine it's mine it belongs to me when you do that you're handing the attorney everything that you own, every possible asset, every liquid asset, cash on hand, and all of your toys and all of your stuff, they're going to be redistributed. It doesn't matter if there's a will. A will is a way for, for an attorney to get into an estate and for them to raise it from the top down. And, and I witnessed that in my own case. Now, um, my mother is a psychopath. And um, I was listed as an heir in my grandparents' will. And in their will, the attorney had written in there that if something happens to one of the children or grandchildren, then their mother or father would get their inheritance. And so what happened? In 2010, I find myself on the receiving end of somebody beating my head in and apologizing to me for my death. He didn't want to do that. He was directed to do that through force and coercion. And he was actually in a rage, but he was crying at the same time. So that it's whoever had set him off, you know, here he is. I've never seen anybody in, in that state of mind um, up until then and, of course, thereafter. But it was prompted by the will that was written by Rick Kimbrough years before that. And, of course... Rick Kimbrough was the municipal judge in that community, Grandview, Washington. And 
All of these things are relative to what Rick Kimbrough wants. After Jeff was murdered in 2010, I finally realized that I needed to remove myself from that property, Loon Lake, Washington. And I moved elsewhere for a short amount of time, of course. And I went back up there with my girls in December to find that my house had been completely destroyed. They pulled out all of the plumbing, they pulled out all of the electricity. I knew it was them, so I didn't make a police report. I went downtown and I talked to some friends of ours and they knew some homeless people that needed a place to stay and they said they'd clean it up. I had a wood stove in there, they wouldn't be cold for the winter time. And um, in this we got those homeless people in there and I salvaged what I could and I took off to the Midwest. It took three days for the sheriff and CPS to arrive on that property and tell the people that we had in there that they were looking for me because they had heard that I didn't have any running water and I didn't have any electricity and they were there to protect my children. I didn't make a police report and at that moment in time they had evidence that it was indeed the sheriff and the local municipality that had broken into my home and destroyed it taking out my power and my plumbing. So essentially, the work of attorneys evidenced, you know, and you can see this in action now uh, firsthand, but then start applying that to everything else going on around the world, you know, and to a bigger and bigger uh, uh, productions like the thing in Ukraine now. Everything. Uh, before Every that, it was Iraq, Afghanistan, okay, you know, and now we get, you know, the the big drama between uh, China, Russia, United States, North Korea, just to keep people in fear, keep them running back to their governments to protect them when they're the ones that are doing these things in the first place, just on a bigger level, what you saw in your own life on the world stage now. Absolutely. Bottom line, it's just business. Phil said that couple of years ago and and it simplified everything in my mind he said Tammy I was telling him you know we have to go after these law enforcement officials we have to do this and and I was telling him we don't we always feel bad about having to take somebody down and I and I have to explain to everybody don't feel bad they they've been after you forever and he looked me in the eyes and he said it's just business and it is it's just business and I've got the merchants from the back end that are wailing, they're losing, and so, and, and, and I have the greatest, the greatest love and respect for that phrase and, and for Phil himself, Philip Earl, and it feels so good, especially, you know, the other day being contacted by this municipal judge that wants us to, to now align with them and everything else, it's just business, it's written, Revelation 18, it's just business. I no longer care what happens to you. I don't care what your peers do to you. Um, the only thing that I care about that matters is humanity. Yeah, so um, just a, a recap of the first hour for listeners that just tuned in. Um, you had gone over uh, stories included three FBI agents now getting charged, a judge getting charged. Uh, there were some other good stories regarding um, police and uh, youth counselors. Uh, yeah, a U.S. marshal. Yeah, U.S. That was good to see because, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm still ticked off at the U.S. marshals there in McHenry County because uh, we well, gave them every opportunity in the world. All the evidence is sitting in front of them. It has been, you know, he had. The choice between uh, good and evil right there, and the U.S. Marshals there decided to remain uh, thugs. Right, and the insurance... Um, Perpetuating war. Right. Before we evidence something and give it to their insurer, they cannot begin arresting. They have to have evidence that, yes, indeed, they are working with knowledge and intent to perpetrate these crimes against humanity. And at the time that the insurance received this evidence that was the time when this began to occur and yes a US Marshal is now arrested and charged with criminal activity as well as many many agents 
I don't remember ever seeing a story about a U.S. Marshal getting charged. No, no, they're they've actually always uh, been outside of the bankruptcy because they are the. They were custodian. granted immunity under um, the uh, Geneva Convention, nineteen twenty nine, and seventeen eighty nine Judiciary Act, uh -huh. and everywhere else in between. The U.S. Marshals were the holders of the the um, custodians of the bankruptcy, so they were holding prisoners of war in the lower chambers of the exchequer, which is, of course, hell, or the bowels of a ship, however you want to describe it. Which, which, which again, to point out and reiterate, the whole thing of, is a facade, because U.S. Marshals are under Congress. Congress, and Congress is the one that's bankruptcy. How can you be the one that is the trustee over your own bankruptcy? Absolutely. I don't care what face of Congress you call it, it's still Congress. Absolutely, and my pleasure today, again, was... Um, reporting on that judge magistrate, the former judge magistrate, because the magistrates have always been the e-forms of Sparta. They've always been the administrators. And they've always been the one pushing the buttons, and they're now also being held accountable and entered into the exchequer. Right, and they're still playing the old game in McHenry County, you know, and thinking that everything's hunky-dory. Um, or the, although I suspect they're starting to sweat at this right. point. They were testing the waters this week to see if they could get away with convincing me that he had uh, previous warrants out of Wisconsin. And I provided them the evidence that says... Commercial no, crimes, sorry. false allegations, that's all right. it responds to by the evidence. Right. It's and all and evidence. And again, I was certified to the insurance, and now we're seeing the fall. A marshal has been charged, magistrate judge has been charged. All of these things will just begin happening faster and faster and faster, as everybody's been seeing um, since October, since the genocide order uh, was first implicated, especially you know October, November, because it was in August when we the United States issued its first order, and um, since that time we've seen it go faster and faster and faster, and it only goes as fast as we can evidence these crimes occurring up against humanity. And um, we're working on it, folks. It should be really soon when you're seeing this, you know, nothing but this. And they won't have time to promote their agenda through, like, soap operas or anything. You'll just have well, They're your... scrambling to get it done now, promoting the Cold War, demonizing North Korea. And we're not allowing that. And please, to our listeners, don't allow that to occur. They assume that you're consenting based on trending behavior. So if you're watching these in the mainstream media and you're trending these things, make sure you're commenting and let, letting your disapproval and um, uh, dissent be made known in the comment sections and make sure that they know that we are aware of what they're doing, that you are aware of what they're doing and it's no longer to be tolerated because consent is presumed if you're not dissenting. If you're not saying anything against it, they're under their own statutes and their own maxims, they're presuming that you're consenting. Um, uh, Bouvier said that uh, in Bouvier, John Bouvier's maxim is uh, adapted to the United States Constitution, um, maintains that consent is presumed by law unless express dissent is made known. And express dissent means that you have to say something or do something contrary to consent. So please do so now. Now is the time. To or you can choose up. to feed birds and go to jail. That was horrifying. 81 years old. I cannot imagine how cold she is in there. That hurts old bones. It hurts young bones. I am so tired. That's of exactly the, the, the picture you need to get in your mind about what the U.S. Incorporated thinks of you. Especially when you've aged out and you're no longer producing for them. Uh, you, you know, according to their own written uh, and, you know, evidenced actions, uh, you're no longer of any value to them. And that's what it boils down to, is they put a value on human beings' lives through the system of commerce that they've created because they have no empathy. They can sound like they have empathy, these are different, de-evolved, uh, you know, branches of, of of our species. You know, they're they're not they're not like a human being that that cares about birds. No, they're no, they, I don't have any compassion or empathy for any other 
being because he view beings as an accountant views numbers. A psychopath can only view a human being as a number, a denominational value. And you saw this. You reported on that, um, also on that priest that uh, maintained that, that all poor people are drug abusers and illegitimate bastards and all of these different uh, foul things as he delivered up the homeless people. And it's the same thing written up in Matthew 27. It was the chief priests and, and um, elders that delivered Jesus up for death. And here's a priest right in front of your eyes. It's still going on. 20 people a, a day, I think it said, are dying in France, homeless people. It's horrifying. You know, and then the, the, the uh, people here in this so-called country in the Western media, they read that and say, well, that's only France, you know. Who cares? It doesn't affect me. No, this is this is uh, affecting all of us. Don't let those concepts like France, uh, any of these borders that are set up are created by the attorney to part you out. Right. And breaking news from CNN, 20 passengers aboard Malaysian Airlines Flight 370 worked with Austin, Texas-based Freescale Semiconductor, the company says. Whoa. So that's interesting that uh, this flight just happened to go down and nobody knows where it is yet. They've seen oil slicks and, and everybody stay tuned, especially to um, here at Revolution Radio, Bo, uh, the Bo and Rocco show next Wednesday, 10 to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, as well as Bo's page, because I know that he'll be covering this as things occur um, and, and we'll... Uh, he'll be providing the breaking news from our side. Um, I wanted to go a little bit into human husbandry um, and, and tell everybody about like the do d e w dot com, and they put out a really worthy read. Once upon a time, when the continent was sparsely populated. The indigenous peoples, having been largely killed off by introduction of pestilent disease and natural resources, seem so abundant that they would never be used up. Public bodies, corporations, were organized mainly to distribute the resources to the favored or privileged populace via an assortment of rights. Water rights, grazing rights, hunting rights, logging rights, mining rights, trading rights, building rights fishing rights, rights to free speech, rights to bear arms, and other rights offered to you by an incorporated state. Some of these rights promoted the practice of what we call animal husbandry. This is farming, folks. And here at Leaving the Farm, we do not tolerate human farming. At the Bowen Rocco show, we do not tolerate human farming. And if you want to get off this farm, please visit us at chooseyourside.org and read through the document session, section under the resource page, the authorized documents. Somebody was looking for an executor doc and forgiveness doc. Those are in Rocco's documents. If you read them, you'd know they're there. Today, somebody was asking me about that, and and um, everything's written, everything's right there for you to get out of this, to not be that female left in her car for five or six years dead, and nobody notices, not even her family that says, oh, we haven't talked in years. That's not tolerable. That's something that's that's commonplace to war zones and other places where there's active war going on. And make no mistake, this is a war. This is a war of Congress against you, the people of the world, the human beings. It's all dressed up in all these different faces, you know, uh, Russia versus USA, you know, um, uh, you know, USA versus uh, Afghanistan, whatever face they put on it, it's another excuse to go in and continue their war against you. 
And we'll be back next week, folks. Don't miss the Bull and Rocco show, 10 to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, Studio A. Thank you, Bull. Be well. Thanks. Be well. <laughs>